What's going on traders? Uh, was not expecting to make a video today, but here we are uh, around two o'clock, GTLB decided to make a move and we ended up taking a trade on it, two trades to be exact. Um, as you can see, 4520 area was previous resistance. This thing made a crazy move all the way up towards 50. We're going to zoom in and take a look at it. Um, while I was in the trade, I did have someone from the room look up like why this thing was moving just in case it was like a buyout, you know, somewhere up here. Um, obviously didn't want to continue to add into this if it was. Um, but it ended up being like they were raising their subscription price or something. And I guess uh, that got some investors all happy. But um, pretty much I was kind of watching it here. I didn't quite like it. And then it made this move here from 4770s all the way up to 4960s. And it was a fast move. Uh, we ended up getting filled at 4955 uh, on the ask. This thing was spready. It still is. It's not too bad right now but it was really spready, like 50, 60 cents. So I put that out on the ask. Um, it didn't fill me right away. And then it finally did come up and fill me. But as you can see, it only went down to 49.17. I was looking for uh, at least a dollar on it for those for that $50. So I was looking at 48.55 uh, was what I was looking for. And as you can see, it didn't really come anywhere close. Um, it went up a little higher. As it went up to the highs here, um, I was really looking for up towards that line 52. Because if you look on the daily, um, I drew that line based off of like, it, it hit that top there a bunch of times, even over here, sort of, uh, it hit it a couple of times before that little wick through. And that's kind of what I was looking at. That's where that line came from. So when it was coming up, I was hope, hoping it would, when it go, it would go up to there so I could get an ad. Um, but it stopped here at 5128. I actually tried to hit the ask on the way down and my order went out at 51 and I just never got filled. It actually just kind of dumped right back down, ended up going all the way down, uh, to 49. Uh, exactly. And so again, I was still looking for 48.55. So a little frustrated because had I got that ad at 51, our average is, you know, <clears throat> up in the fifties and that would have been, it would have been a great trade. Uh, we would obviously 50 bucks would have been higher than 49. So, uh, had we got any, I, I'm pretty sure I would have at least hit the 0.5. And if, uh, the cover 50 was lower, I would have at least made the 50 bucks off of it. But it decided to not go back through 49 after we missed our ad. So we were kind of still in this trade. It went back up, tried to come back down again. At this point, I was like, okay, this looks like it's going to be good. Um, and then I started to curl back up. And I really thought about just cutting it here. Um, but the way that it was moving with no real pullback, it had this huge move. I was like, this thing's got to have like the actual pullback. Um, so I'm going to see what it does here at the highs. And if it's just like a slow grindy move through the highs, I'm just going to go ahead and probably cut it, even if it was up towards 52. Um, but if it makes like a, a decent move and up towards that 52 area off the daily, I'll be okay with it. And as you can see, it actually spiked up to that 5228 almost exactly. Um, and so we ended up adding to this. I actually think I ended up just hitting a market order on this one because uh, I wanted to make sure I got filled as close, not as close, but up towards uh, when it made that move instead of hoping to get filled on the ask and not getting filled at all. Um, and that ended up being a good ad. Uh, it actually came down to 5068. I think we ended up with, um, I don't remember where my average was, but it was, I actually, I do remember cause I remember saying it bounced right off of it. We were at 64, uh, it came down to 60. We were at 64 and then it came down again and got to 68. And I remember we were sitting at 64. So our take profit was obviously below that. Um, uh, we had hundred shares at that. So our take profit was, I think like 5013 is what it put it at when I hit the cover 50 button. Um, so that we didn't need to go that much further. We just needed the 50 retest, but we couldn't get it. So it started to make lower highs here as well. So once I realized it was kind of forming a descending triangle, I actually went ahead and hit it for the, my last ad. So we did a 50, 50, 100. So one, one, two, and I was really looking for this to pull down. And with that in mind, I did the math and I realized that if I cut it at the highs, it would be a max loss uh, of 300 bucks, right? We had, we talked about this. That's where our max loss is now. And so be it, right? It's just one trade. Well, that's exactly what it did. It went up, it broke the highs, and literally as it broke the highs, it automatically stopped me out. And I think we got a little slippage. We ended up losing like $319. Um, so at this point, I'm like, uh, well, that sucks. Um, it is what it is. You know, <laughs> didn't trade for the last two days, and we finally get in one, and it kind of missed our take profits, you know, um, and kept bouncing off our average, et cetera. Uh, it sucks. But at this point, I'm still telling myself this hasn't had a real pullback. Now, keep in mind, look at something like GoTo. Uh, neither is this. I, this thing literally went straight up and I was watching this uh, when it broke trend there and it did have a nice little pullback, but it never really had a pullback. I bought right back up and it's just been going sideways. So you don't have to have a pullback, right? And it's not, that's not a thing where it has to happen. 
But in my head, I'm telling myself, there's a really good opportunity after such a big move that you're going to get some kind of a pullback. So I thought this thing was going to burst up and just run. Uh, the way that it, the way that it was trading, the way the spread, everything, uh, it just kept getting bought up every time it dipped. Uh, I mean, look at the wicks, the, all these bottom wicks. They just kept getting bought up, and I really thought this thing was going to fly like up towards 55 or something like that. So the cut there would have been great, uh, whether it was for a max loss or not, whether it was automatic or not. I, I think that's a good cut because this thing could have easily have went went. It could have kept going, but it only got the 52.83. And it just couldn't get through there. Um, or, oh, 5299. It went to 5283 here and then got up to 50, 5299, not 53. And in my head, I'm like, wow, someone must have been front running that because a bunch of shares came through there. And you can see all the shares that come through. And uh, yeah, you can still kind of see it. And uh, they couldn't get it up to 53. And I was like, wow, that's going to be a fake out breakout. So in my head, I was waiting for the bid to start getting hit. And I went up from 200 shares to 300 shares saying that if we can just get that quick flush down, right, I to make back $300, I would just need a dollar. And from up here in the high 52s, we would only need 51s, right? So I ended up getting filled on the way down at 52.61 for 300 shares. Uh, well, it looks like we got 200 to 57 and 100 to 61. So um, I guess that would put our average like 59. I think it was 59. And as you can see, it tried right away, right? 51.69, um, pretty frustrating because that was all we needed was the dollar. And originally I put the order out at 61, just looking to make that $300 back. And it literally dove to 69. I was so sad <laughs> because that was the bid. Again, this thing was spready. It was like a 30 cent spread at all times. So I couldn't just drag it up and get anywhere near the fill I was looking for. It was all the way back up to the highs. And at this point, I knew I was stopping out. When I get in, if I ever get in for a fake out breakout, it's with the intention of either it works as a fake out breakout or I'm getting out at the highs. Because if it tries to fake out breakout and then goes higher, it wasn't a fake out breakout. It was just a it was just a little pullback. But this ended up being a fake out breakout, trying to get back to the highs, didn't get through. So whoever was holding this thing down up there at 99, um, they were still doing a good job there at 97. And we finally get the pullback. Um, I had an order out. Um, I actually lowered it all the way down for, I think, 275 of the 300 shares at 51. I think it was 13 because I was like, well, if we can get down through 5150, the odds are we'll get down there for the 51 test, which we ended up getting there, but not right away. Um, but as you can see, I got the 37 and I ended up taking these off, I think, at 54 because it went down to 37 and started to come back up. And I wasn't about to let the whole thing go back against me. So we actually ended up taking half there. And then it did dip down to 51 and we took half and then half again. So we were pretty much down to leftovers. I think I took half of 38, yeah, 19 shares. So we were down to 19 shares. I actually ended up adding 11 back just to get an even number for 30 because it, it made the spike up to 51.74 and it looked like it was going to fail and go even lower. Um, so I actually ended up adding just a little bit back cause I knew my average was going to be fine. Cause it was way up here in the 52s at this point. And I knew that we were going to be green on the trade. So it was a little bit easier to maybe add looking to get the bigger move down with at least some shares. Um, but as you can see, it really struggled to get through, uh, this like 50, 50 area right here. It just kept trying to get through and then bought back up and it just stayed there the whole time. So on this little dip here, if we scroll really in, you can see this green candle, it finally went through. It got the 5041 and then got bought right back up. I and mean, look at the wick. So obviously a bunch of people had some orders out there under 5050, just looking to get covered um, or buy. I would assume it was just shorts getting covered. And so as it came back up, we actually took our shares off there at 5068, half of them. Um, I actually had to go get my son from the bus stop. And when I did that, uh, I put a trailing stop in and it never got hit, but it was at it, above this candle. Uh, 74. I had it at 76 and it went to 70. And I remember looking at the ask, uh, I, I literally sat down and saw it and the ask went to 78. It just never got filled. Uh, 70 was the last fill that it got. And literally right after that, it just had a nice bleed off, went through that area, kept bleeding off. I put an order out. This is the first order out of all of these where I put them out and it actually got filled. It was from my last 15 shares at 49.59, which it went to 49.58. And then as you can see, it shot right back up. So um, pretty good fill there, uh, on the last little cover, we ended up making $71 on it. So went from down $319 to up 71.58. I am not going to complain about that. Um, 
could have been, it would have been a lot less stressful had I just made the $50 originally. But, you know, sometimes you got to have tough trades. And the fact that I came out on top is good. Um, a big company, um, I wouldn't say volume out of nowhere per se, um, but a big move in the afternoon is not my specialty. And it just goes to show you right there. I, I took a max loss on this. Um, I call it max loss, uh, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that's all I got. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Appreciate the support as always. Had a good first day in the room. We didn't trade anything. But it was nice to finally get everything kind of moving in the right direction. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Peace.